Okay. All right. Great. Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so happy to be joining CARA members today and really, really uh, glad that organizations like CARA exist because yes. it's so important to ensure that everyone, but especially our seniors, have the information they need to be able to access their vote safely and to vote, which is vital which, as we all know, is vital to our democracy. Um, and of course, as we know from uh, both what our colleagues from Congressman DeSaunier's office has pointed out and just what we're following in the news, our ability to exercise our vote is being thwarted and attacked on multiple fronts, whether it's Trump's defunding and destabilizing of our post office, or unfortunately other countries interference through social media and other mechanisms to, to spread disinformation and affect our vote. One of the scenarios that I have read that there's fear, fear for around this election is that this interference from foreign countries would tell people that because of either the pandemic or some other crisis that voting was extended beyond November 3rd which would force people or ha cause people then not to send their ballots in on time and affect then their ballot wouldn't count. Um, and also of course, the fear of hacking our different um, voting uh, uh, equipment, which unfortunately is very vulnerable just because we have not adequately built in the protections that are needed across every state or every locality for those voting systems. And I know many of you have worked on that for years and it's lovely to see a number of people I haven't seen in a long time. <laughs> uh, Myrtle, great to see you. Uh, Nell, Michael, so many others. So let me go back into what I, um, uh, some of my thoughts on this election and California's legislative session. But I did wanna say hello to you. Um, those of you who I haven't seen in so long. <laughs> um, so back to, back to my uh, prepared remarks. Um, we also know that across the country, Republican election officials are stripping the rolls. They are reducing polling places. They're refusing to either deliver or accept mail ballots and so much more. But thankfully, California has, with your, many of your help, has worked to protect and assure our ability to vote. Our Secretary of State, Alex Padilla, our local registrars, so many more. Um, but we are still facing serious challenges that could impact California's vote, such as, I mean, COVID. COVID is affecting people who would have normally volunteered to work at our polls. So of course, we need to encourage others to volunteer to become poll workers, because we are still, even though this election, in California, everyone will be sent a mail ballot. We still need in-person voting places because many people are so used to it. And, and I'll discuss the other many reasons, but so we need poll workers. And of course, COVID is affecting people's willingness to volunteer for the polls. And then of course, it's affecting people's willingness to go to the polls. Plus we have many things that are impacting whether we are at the residence that we registered at, the fires. The fires are displacing people. COVID has displaced people. Um, so you may not be near to where you, your ballot either arrives to the residence that your ballot will arrive or near to the polling place that you would normally. Fortunately, in California, people can register or change their registration online until October 19th. So, if you know anyone who's in a situation where they are not, they're temporarily even not at the location where they normally register and thus they're normally vote, excuse me, and thus they may not get their ballot, they can change their registration online until October 19th. And then after October 19th, they can register conditionally any day through to election day, November 3rd. So uh, just remember those things. Everyone will get a vote by mail ballot, but if you're not at your residence, you can change your registration, so then you could still get a vote by mail ballot. And we have the early voting period from Monday, October 5th to Monday, November 2nd. 
which means that once you get that ballot, you can turn it in by mail or to a, uh, a, a ballot drop-off place or to your local registrar anytime between Monday, October 5th and Monday, November 2nd. You can also register and vote on election day. These are all things that California has built in to protect people. And we really want to encourage our cities and local registrars to set up ballot drop-off locations and boxes. So any of us who are nervous about post office will have a place we can drop off ballots. Um, so those are things around voting that I wanted to talk about. But now I want to switch over to California's legislative session that just ended. August 31st was the last day. Unfortunately, we had, there were so many things COVID impacted our sessions. The Republicans played games to try to run down our clock to prevent bills from getting through. But overall, California, I feel very proudly, did the people's business. We, in the state budget we adopted, we funded coronavirus relief for cities. We increased funds to food banks. We prevented cuts to Medi-Cal. We extended the time that people who are dependent on things like CalFresh so they can receive those benefits longer and many other important actions, including extending paid family leave, which is so necessary now that we are impacted by this pandemic. We also passed a bill that the governor has already signed into law, which will prevent pandemic related evictions until past the end of this year and also protect, provide some protections for those who may be struggling to pay their mortgages so their homes will not be foreclosed. I fortunately had four bills that are on now, well actually only three, sadly, but still three bills on the governor's desk. And those are a corporate disclosure act, which would allow California for the first time, our franchise tax board to inform us how much a large corporation pays the state in taxes. We don't know now. And we could have many large corporations that don't pay any taxes to the state of California. My bill would also require disclosure of the state tax credits that these corporations are claiming. So that's a very important one, SB 972, and it's on the governor's desk. Then I have SB 1079, which would, if you remember during the last recession, there were a number of large corporations like Blackstone that snatched up many foreclosed homes and basically became the largest single family homeowners in California. And we wanna prevent another Wall Street takeover of single family homes. And that's what my bill SB 1079 does. And then SB 1064 is another very important bill. I'm the chair of the Public Safety Committee and the Public Safety Budget Committee. And so I'm very focused on trying to reform our criminal justice system and provide due process for people who become system impacted. What we is the term we use if you are if you end up in prison or you end up uh, in the criminal justice system. So what my bill 1064 does is if you are in prison, if there is a, another person in prison and in custody informant and that informant confidentially provides information that would compromise your, your record in terms of going before a parole board, that that information could only be used if it was corroborated. So in other words, what this does is limit the ability for an in-custody informant to basically compromise another person's ability to have a fair parole hearing. Um, so that's a very important bill also, SB 1064. And now I want to just briefly switch over to our ballot this um, uh, November. And I think most of you are following and paying close attention, as I mentioned, obviously, besides the national election, which this is extraordinarily a time where our values are on the ballot. And I wanted to mention Prop 15, the Schools and Communities First initiative. All of us are going to receive lots of misinformation that tries to tell us that Prop 15 affects homeowners' property tax. Mm -hmm. It does mm -hmm. not. It does not touch homeowners at all, period. Mm -hmm. It is purely and solely on commercial properties. 
And what it would do is allow for, and so many of us have been advocating for this for years, it would allow California to assess commercial properties in a much more fair way, which in turn would provide much better funding to our cities, our counties, our schools, and so much more. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to mention that one. And <clears throat> I also wanted to mention Prop 25, which is a very cynical attempt by the bail industry to try to reverse the legislature's action to end cash bail. And right now, during the time of such high unemployment and so many other economic factors, we do not need to further cripple low-income people by requiring outrageous amounts of cash bail. It has been proven to be extraordinarily unfair and unjust, and California acted to eliminate it, but the bail industry put on the ballot Prop 25 to reverse our decision. So what we have to do um, in casting our vote is vote yes on Prop 25. So I wanna stop there and let you ask me questions. <laughs> 